Hello and welcome back to Up The Villa podcast. If you are new to our channel, subscribe, get on this journey with us and smash a like on this episode. Let's go big. Let's go a thousand likes on this episode and share your thoughts in the comment section down below. So we've got quite a lot to get through on this episode. We are going to go to the YouTube community hub and we're going to check the thoughts of Aston Villa fans. We are going to go to AVFC Scout who has done another Brilliant scouting mission on Legia Warsaw. And then we've got some general topics to get through as well. And we've got some beef coming to B6. And it's Legia Warsaw with a little bit of beef. But I'm loving it. I'm loving Aston Villa at the minute. I'm loving creating the content for you. It's absolutely fantastic. And I just can't wait to be back down in Villa Park on Thursday. My brother is here from France, lives in France, lives in Nice. Uh, we're going to hit up the German market on Thursday. We're going to have a great day and we are going to sit in K6 where I normally sit and watch the game together. So really looking forward to it. Sort of like a special game for me uh, because he's back for this game as well. So really looking forward to it. Going to get him on the fan cam as well. So fan cams. Are just back on well, the back, they, they haven't really gone away up there. But well, we didn't do the last one, but they are back. But yeah, so fan cams after the game. Anyone wants to get involved, just come over where we normally are and share your thoughts. So, where shall we start? Let's start then with what we've got to come, and we've got some big games one game at a time. I know, I know you guys out there that are one game at a time. People, I know, but we've got to also look at what's to come because we've got to look at the squad. We've got to look at how we can use the squad and implement it properly because the 11 players that play on Thursday on Thursday cannot play all these nine games in December. There's going to have to be some rotation. There's going to have to be some managing of the squad, which Unai will be looking to do. Uh, but first of all, yes, Legia Warsaw at home is a massive game. Why is it a massive game? Because we need to get out of the group. We need to get out of the group. We need to win the group. And then we can kind of just go Europe. There you go. Stay there till February time. And then we'll come back to you then. And I think it's so important that... You know, we get through this period because this period as well, we've been in a group. It means that you're playing a lot of games. The fixtures are congested anyway. So when we get out of the group, it's only two games and you're through to the next round. So, you know, that congestion of Europe, the Thursday nights, every two weeks, these come around. You know, we won't really have those until sort of February time. And then we've got Bournemouth on a Sunday, which is a massive game. It's huge. So we do Bournemouth. We then go into that big week. We smash City at home. We smash Arsenal at home. We're top of the league. And then we're going into the rest of December. Feet up against Shurinsky. Uh, Hopefully, we won't have to play a full-strength team there because we've already threw and whatever. And then we've got games against Brentford, Sheffield, United, and then Burnley. So, nine games to come uh, in this period. And like I say, it's about managing and utilising the squad, utilising players, picking the right game for a certain player and just managing this period. It's the same for everybody. Everybody's in the same boat. Everybody's got the same amount of Premier League games. Um, and it's just important that we do that. You know, Moreno had 60 minutes for the under-23s last week. So hopefully he can get another 60 in his legs. He's going to be crucial for this period. Ramsey came on against Spurs, so it's important that he can maybe get a 30 or a 60 in his legs. That would be absolutely massive. You've then got players like Duran, who we might need when called upon. It's important for him to get game time. Longley, Chambers might be needed. Then Donker might be needed. You know, in these games, it's going to be so important in December that some of these players, then Donka might have to come on and play a 25-minute period. So some minutes for these type of players is crucial. Uh, even if they're getting minutes against Zerinsky, is what I'm saying. Not necessarily for this game, but maybe Zerinsky, they might need those minutes. So that's where we're at. Heavily congested, utilise the squad, 
it is a squad to be used. And I think that's my, my general gist of this point, what I'm trying to make. So let's go then to Legia Warsaw. Let's talk about the beef. The beef that they are bringing. They're not happy, Villa fans. They're not happy. They have kicked up a bit of a fuss. They've wanted their 5% of 2,100 tickets. In short form, we've said no. We've said that we have gone to the SAG, the Safety Advisory Group. And this is a group that works with the police and the policing for fixtures and getting the right allocation, getting the right security right for the number of people that are going, etc. And this is just something that we have to work with. It's something that we have to do for every away game. Um, and they have put in brackets the so-called safety advisory group. Um, they have kicked up a fuss saying that we had over 2,000 fans go. We could have had 1,700 for the return fixture, but we didn't. They gave us ticket collection points. They were advising us on where we could spend time during the game, etc. Uh, and it's just this back and forth article of they're not happy. So they wanted 2,100 tickets and they've got 890. <laughs> They've got 890 tickets and they're, they're just not happy saying people live in England and that, that they'd want to go and watch the game. But the thing is, it's it's kind of not Villa's fault. We have to go and work with the police. Uh, and they've just been basically saying that, you know, they've, they've, Villa have based it on security reasons and that, that that's not the case. That shouldn't be the case. But for the legier sort of, hierarchy uh, i would just like to highlight a point last time that they were in england and the crowd trouble that happened inside the king power as you can see on the right hand side fighting with the police we've got images like this we've got images of just yeah fighting with police inside the stadium and i think if the police are looking back on leggy warsaw fans time last time out there's a reason why 2,100 tickets have not been allocated to Legia Warsaw fans. And I think this is this is why. Uh, but we've seen with Alkmaar as well, the fact that they didn't get a massive allocation. It's a Thursday night. It's, yeah, you, I can't ever imagine we're going to have a game where there's like 2,000 of them rocking up at Villa Park. Maybe towards the back end of the tournament, if we get there. Uh, but I think that's just where we're at. But, you know, where I'm at, it, it, it's a big game. It's an important game. I'm, I'm absolutely loving Europe. I'm loving the sense of walking to the ground, seeing the fans, seeing that they're different. Their scarves are going, they're bouncing, they're singing, they're chanting. They're, you know, it, it's a good vibe and, and I've, I've really enjoyed it. I've tried to embrace it and just try and get behind it and yeah, I've loved it, really. I've loved seeing different styles on, on how they play. And I've enjoyed seeing different Villa players play as well. I've really enjoyed watching Longley. I think he looks really good, uh, etc. So, you know, I, I've really enjoyed it. So let's go then to AVFC Scout. Shout out to you. I'll put your link in the description. Uh, so if anyone wants to go and check out his socials, you can do. Uh, so we've got the opposition analysis here then. So... Their current Europa form is draw one, lost one, one. Uh, they have scored 2.4 and conceded two on average. Uh, they currently sit top of the group with nine points and three goals. Uh, their goal difference. We are on a better goal difference and currently sit second on nine points. The way UEFA works is it's head to head before it goes to goal difference. So that's why it's important that we win the game, a draw probably might not be enough for us to top the group if they win their next game. So that's why Aston Villa winning, we will then sort of counteract that with the better goal difference. So that's why it's quite important. But we look like we're probably going to go through anyway. But, you know, we've got to we've got to do the job, basically. Um, the domestic form, loss, loss, win, draw, draw. They're currently sixth, 1.5 goals scored, 1.3 goals against. Key players are Jasu, Musi, and Wozlek. They play in a 3 4 3, a 3 5 2. Uh, Legia will be set up to be solid defensively and five at the back. 
Playing away at Villa Park, I think Legia will expect to have less of the ball and look to play quick direct on the counter when opportunity arises. Their offensive strategy is focused on wide play with their wing backs, given the license to get forward. Uh, Vosleck is more of a winger than a fullback. Lots of crosses into the box, aiming for the back post. Interestingly, Peckart, their top goal scorer, has sort of fallen out of form. So they're going with Guau up top. So this is the predicted lineup uh, from ABFC Scout. We had problems in the last game. Defending was a big problem. But we're at a different phase in the season now, aren't we? We're at a completely different phase. We have got our act together. We've gone up levels. We've played in Europe now three times. And we are starting, well, four times. And we're starting to see, you know, where we are and what to expect from those games and how to play. I think, you know, we're growing as a squad. Some players haven't played in Europe before and, and we've just grew into it as we've gone, haven't we? And that's what all good teams do in tournament football, grow into it rather than start well and finish crap. So, uh, yes, yeah, so the first goal, big problems. <clears throat> Chambers was a big problem in this game. Uh, the first goal was made by Legia's wing-backs. Uh, the left wing-back has the ball with the winger overlapping. Chambers needs help. He's covering two players, so can't pressure the ball effectively. The left wing-back is allowed to play the cross into the box too easily. Digne loses his man at the back post. Crowd noise probably hinders Villa's communication. The line is disjointed and plays the right wing-back on side. Um, so, yeah, it was sort of like a left to right. Uh, we weren't tracking. We weren't looking over our shoulders. We were having problems with Chambers being sort of overloaded. And does Kamara come? Does he not? But we've really assessed that this season. And that's why you can now start to see Kamara being in that screening role. Second goal. In this game, Chambers all too often took up high positions. Uh, that, in my opinion, was too high up the pitch. Before the second goal, we had Legia in our own corner. Uh, within a few seconds, three quick passes. They're on the edge of Villa's box. Too easy. Although Chambers made an effort to get back, he simply doesn't have the pace, ultimately leaving Mookie unmarked. Villa really learned from this and have since started using Kamara in a deeper role, covering these right-back areas at times. And then here you can see goal involvements. Who are the players that are heavily involved? And it's Wozlek, the right wing-back. He's got 13 goal involvements, four goals. Peckart, out of form, like I say, he's got 10 goals. We've got their striker, Gual, four goals. We've got uh, Moussi on eight. We've got Josu on six. So, you know, they're finding the back of the net. It's going to be difficult, but I do think Aston Villa are going to have far too much, uh, far too much for Legia Warsaw especially at home. If we go back to that game that we played, we had 60% possession. They had 40. We had 19 shots. They had eight. We had six on target. We had three big chances. We missed two of those big chances. We had 494 passes, 88% passing accuracy as well. So, yeah, if we can have the ball, if we can control the game, if we can be defensively sound, then I expect us to win this game quite comfortably. So on our YouTube community hub, I asked for Villa fans to share their thoughts and let me know how they're feeling about this game. Uh, there's some quite long ones in here, so I don't think you can read all of them. But I want to go to this one, and this is what I love about you guys the interaction that you have with each other in these comments as well, which is massive. So uh, it is all generally quite fair as well. There's respect in there as well. So uh, thanks for that. So we'll go with this one then. So, uh, and it's it's two people sort of on about squad rotation. So it's going to be interesting to see what has been said because I haven't actually read them. I'm going to read them live. So hopefully you've all been nice to each other. Uh, so this is from LG26. Squad needs rotating. Busy fi fixture list now. If start Ramsey and Moreno, if they're fit, Duran for Watkins, Bailey and Zaniolo. Kamara is suspended uh, for Bournemouth game. So I'd start him alongside Tielemans, Longlake and Carlos at right back. And unfortunately, 
uh, Martinez is in goal. Uh, Bozzi has said, I get where you're coming from, but for me, this is not the approach we go. We go strong here. Uh, he'll probably play a similar team as he did against Alkmaar. A couple of changes here and there. Bozzi's put, for me, we don't want to go into the game week six needing anything. That is a chance to rotate players. And top in the group is a chance uh, to miss a knockout round. So another two less games. And this is the team that can stop us topping the group. And I think if we go strong and get the reward, then the free game less is an incentive. Uh, it's going to get to a point where we might have to sacrifice Europa Conference League. Every Europa Conference League game, fans have said strongest side. We will burn out playing our strongest 11 all the time. If those players I listed can't beat Legia at home, then, then what use are they to us? No worries. Football's about opinions. I'm not dropping Watkins. I'm, cer I'm certainly not starting Ramsey or Moreno. They need to be eased in both players. Have already had setbacks when coming back. Uh, from the first time, but winning this game means that we have three less games. Uh, so that's why it's important to go strong for me here. Emery has already said that other players need to play. So the assume he'll rotate. It's just, I'd rather us go for Champions League football rather than Europa Conference League. So that's a great little conversation with two fans that are fans of the podcast. So thank you both. Thank you for being respectful to each other as well. Uh, we've got Michael Weedle, who has said, it's been a long time since I have seen a Villa team this good. I have been stuck on my heroes, Gary Shaw and Gordon Cairns. This new Villa team is packed with heroes. When Tyro Mings got injured, I was really worried, but I'm loving I'm having Pab. He's such a level-headed lad up the Villa. Great comments. Uh, we've got a, another one here from just for the comments. Uh, morning, Luke. Uh, I think ahead of the Legia, all I can think about is how much we've improved since those first couple of games in Europe. Legia are a strong Polish outfit, but I think Villa are going to school them in this one uh, and it's going out for a home win. So 3-1. Uh, Lina's put, uh, can't wait for Thursday. Let's get Villa Park rocking. Will be a tough test for Legia and no mugs, but in Unai we trust. Uh, Mika's put, let's... Hope their players are knackered on Thursday and we get a Legia Warsaw instead. <laughs> Love that from you, Mick. Uh, Pau is an absolute mad lad. The new Olaf Marburg. What a header. Take a bow, son. That's from user. Loads of different letters. Uh, we've got uh, Damned If You Do, as Port would prefer, a get the job done approach. And we go strong first half rather than start much changed team and have to bring on the big guns. We have got uh, out of the trash, a uh, big commenter of the channel has put top the group within a week will be amazing. Looking for a slaughter job on Sunday. Goals and a clean sheet for the confidence with City putting distance between us and Spurs as we head into the tough games of them and Arsenal. Uh, we have got can't stop looking at the table. Have a good day. That is from Villain Forever. We'd read one more. Uh, Beat them by two goals and we'll win the group and can afford to rest players for the busy defend December fixture list. Some sort of luxury we could do with, but it can't take away anything from Bournemouth match as this is a must win to cement our top four place ahead of a big double header at Villa Park under the lights. So cheers for you guys who have been sharing your thoughts. You're all absolutely legends. And yeah, you know, I think I think everybody's got fair points there. The rotation, whether we do, whether we don't. What I probably would say about the rotation is that we've been rotating and we've had to bring on players that we've rested. And in an ideal world, that's not why we rotate, is it? We rotate for the players to get the job done and then those players don't have to play. That's the way I look at it. I don't want to have players that sort of do well for 70, but you still have to bring... I don't want to do that. I don't want to play them. That's where I'm at. So I think we've got to be at that place where... And we haven't done it yet, have we? We haven't got the job done and then not had to bring players on. Both the home games, we've had to bring on the big hitters like a couple of people have said. So, yeah, let's just win the game, get the job done at the start and then not have to sort of bring these players on. So we'll do the predicted lineup tomorrow. We'll go in depth. We'll have a look at how they've been playing, etc. A little bit more detail on the tactical pad. 
but hopefully I've remembered to do everything on this episode that I think I said I was going to do. Yes, I have. Right. So cheers, everybody, for watching. Your support is just tremendous. Like, it's it's really big, to be fair. Um, and I'm absolutely loving creating the content. All I ask for is you hit like. Hit the like button. That's all you've got to do. Just like, 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 and subscribe if you haven't already. Um, and then you've enjoyed it. And then I've got some because you've enjoyed it. Uh, you're all commenting with each other. So, yeah, cheers for your support. We've got predicted lineup. And then we've got the uh, fan cam after the game. There will be no match reaction because then we go into Bournemouth. So, match reaction is the fan cam. And then we will go into the Premier League action as well. So anyone wants to come on the fan cams, we had a great uh, compliment the other day about that we got sort of like little kids to come on and share their thoughts. And it's great for them and great for their memories. The fan cams are open for anybody. So if you want to come on, then however old, however young, if you want to come on and talk about Villa after a game, then it's there for you guys. So cheers, everybody. Cheers to AVFC Scouts up the villa. Um, and yeah.